and we are back with the vacuous perspective. G'day. Hello. Hello, mate. How are things, Val? Oh, geez, you're all puffy. We're back again. Yeah, we're back again. Um, uh, did, did you know I was actually sorry to just launch in here? Please, please, but, yeah. uh, right in. A few weeks back at the intro, I actually asked you about, I gave you a bit of a memory test about the Lord be with you and all that sort of stuff. Oh, yeah. Okay. That was a while back now. But um, I'm wondering if I can tap into a similar part of your memory. Um, Victoria Bitter Ads. Yeah. Now, Victoria Bitter Ads, they're, they're, first of all, it's a beer ad. So they're trying to, they're, they're, they're making these series of ads and they're all about hard work. And at the end of a hard day's work, you get to have the An best cold. beer. Mm. An ice cold beer. Yeah. Um, well, well, all right. So first of all, the way they do it, the way they establish it is that in order to to um, get it, you got to earn it, right? So mm-hmm. you have to get it and then you can get one. And so, normally it is some kind of physical labor. Yeah, and it's usually hard work, right? Normally hard work. All right, so how many can you remember off the top of your head? But see, the problem I have is yeah. I just um, I just make up things and I feel like they should have been in the ad. Yeah, and they probably I, are. You can Okay, you can get it lifted. You can get it lifting. You absolutely can get it lifting. I'm pretty sure... You can get it shifting. You can also get it shifting. Now, shifting, and this is an interesting one. The shifting one's interesting because in the beginning, he's shifting like bales of hay or a stack of bricks or something. You know what I mean? It's like hard labor, right? Yeah. But in the later, when they were sort of starting to evolve, they started to use different clips to show that same thing. So lifting was something else and shifting was something else. The shifting was him shifting a painting for his wife and getting like visibly annoyed that he's doing this. So he's getting it. He's getting it then when he's shifting this painting. When he's getting his- nags to move the painting. <laughs> so now he wants a beer. You know, now it's beer time, right? After the shifting, beer. All right, so you got lifting, you got shifting. Those are ways you can get it. Can't you get it driving a car? I don't know if it's driving a car. You might be driving <laughs> a truck. You know what I mean? I like they probably can't do that for. No, they probably uh, don't. Yeah, yeah, from a like drink driving point of view. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can get it driving. You know what though? They do sort of. Uh, with, you know, this is one you probably won't get, but the, it, at some point in the song. Just randomly, he says, you can feel it coming on about four. It's a bit early. It's an hour early, isn't it? I do feel it. It's feel it coming on. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So he's just getting excited answer. for it because he's still he's still waiting to get it. Mm. He's but still working. like 30 ads or something. Like there's, there's you can heaps. probably get it doing anything. See, this is what I mean. Like I would say you can get it shoveling. Like can you get it shoveling? That, that yeah, seems well, like an obvious one, but I don't know if that's in the ad, in one of the ads. It probably is in one of them. You know, they would have certain words that because of the way of the flow of the song, because yes, yeah. it's chopping, chopping. Mm. You know, did you, did you know you could get a chopping? And it's a guy I, chopping I wood. I don't even know if I've really ever chopped, to be honest. Well, like wood. I've, I've used an axe, but I haven't done a, like a proper quantity of wood. Like, you know, I might have just oh, hit one. I've fucked around with an axe for, um, uh, like you know, a minute, but I haven't built a house. Oh, okay. So you haven't got it from really, chopping. No, no, you didn't get it. You didn't have the beer feeling. You, you, you did a little bit of it, and you didn't get the beer feeling. I was too young to get the beer feeling, or to have yeah, a beer. Yeah, I was yeah. old enough to wield an axe. Mm, yes, yes, yes. I recall these times. My family used to buy firewood for the winter, and you'd you'd go out the back or or out the front, and there'd be a chopping block, and you'd have a crack at it. And it, it, it was, yeah, yeah, it's pretty scary. But your chopping block, was it a piece of wood? Yeah, also a piece of wood. That's what I found hilarious. Mm. Right? I was like, so how, what, what's, what is this piece of wood is just this indestructible piece of wood. I'm like, I'm chopping wood on it. You think that you'd be able to chop that wood as well? <clears throat> sure. 
But what else would you do? Like a big metal thing? That would you want something soft that you can like? Yeah, you don't want to hit metal when you succeed. But you know, chopping wood is another VB getting it moment. I would have um, thought chopping onto what would make more sense is um, yeah. frozen play doh. I reckon that would be a good texture. Like yeah. Good okay. Texture. Yeah. Not much resistance though. It would just sort of glob into it when you struck it. But, uh, that's why I said frozen. Oh, frozen. Yeah, so okay. That yeah, might add a, little bit, add a little bit more yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. to it. But, yeah. Uh, sorry, this, uh, this, I don't know. This is a little bit unrelated, but, you know, we're wielding axes when we're kids and stuff. Mm. Um, my parents were martial arts instructors mm. and they had uh, shuriken. Yeah, right. The throwy right. thing. Yeah. and little Death frisbees. Death star. Oh, de- I don't know who calls them death stars. I don't know. But, um yeah, I used to go to the park. We lived right next to a park and throw yeah. them at the, throw them at the tree. Oh and I'm God. looking back on it. That is some dangerous shit. Oh, of course. That is some yeah. I don't think I did it with friends. I think I is, is that even worse that I'm just like yeah. alone like throwing death stars. If in- there was a kid throwing death stars down at the park alone, someone there's phone calls. <laughs> But I sort of said this to my mum the other night. I saw her the other night and she's – because I was remembering my childhood kind of, you know, talking to her about childhood and stuff. And, you know, we would be kids. We'd be eight or nine years old. We'd go, just going down to the park, you know, just going down to the park. See you in a bit. They'd go, see ya, no problem, right? I just can't – it was like a different time, you know. Well, it was a different time. But, you know, take your phone with you. We, We don't have them. They didn't exist. Did not exist. Yeah, didn't exist. Were you allowed um, down at the park when you were eight or nine by yourself? Oh, maybe, maybe. Your mum said the same thing. She was like, "That doesn't sound right." Mm. Um, I don't know. Was I? Was I? Was I ten? You know what I mean? You know, I remember going over to a neighbor's house and watching Terminator Two. Right when I was mm. probably about eight-ish, because I'm. 92, the movie came out. It was probably a year and a bit after mm. that that I would have seen it. So I always do the math like that and say I was seven or eight when I saw T2. Wow. Yeah, I think yeah. I was a little bit older. You, you may have been a little bit more advanced than me in that, in that respect. Um, I wasn't allowed down the, the first time I left the house by myself. Uh, I don't know what age I was, but I'm going to say I was about uh, 10. And I, the shops are only – say it's a small shopping center at three or four hundred meters four five hundred meters from my house and apparently my mum followed followed me um watching from trees because you have to walk through a park to get to the shops and so she was she hiding was, she was darting between she was, trees yeah, she was hiding like you know 100 two meters back 200 Ninja meters style back. yeah just watching me like little a flips a little flips <laughs> yeah maybe maybe there's little back flips um and then what what really got my goat was is that the expression Got my goat? Yeah. Got, Are you upset? I was upset. Okay. Yep. Okay. So I go to the <laughs> the at the shopping center. There's a, a hairdresser, right? Little men's yeah. barber. Yeah. Okay. And so she gave me some money and said, "Go get yourself the ha- you know haircut." Okay. So this is, the, this is one of the first the first times I've gone to the hairdresser by myself, right? So yeah, cool. I assumed that I'm allowed to pick the haircut as well. Of course. How else right? are you going to do it? I'm an you're, adult. you're there, you're with the money and the and the hairdresser, and they say, what do you want? And you go, whatever my mum wants. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm not going to say that. Right? <laughs> I've been given the responsibility. Yeah. So you're gonna, I, yeah, I go yeah, in yeah. there and I'm looking around at all the little portraits oh, of like pictures. faces of, of men and stuff with the different mm. hairstyles. You know, there's all this really like kind of – Black and white. Yeah, photos yeah. They're like on the wall, look like this. I want the Tom Cruise. <laughs> yeah, I just yeah. did it again. I just did it again. Oh. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> this is the Tom Cruise podcast. I think we've mentioned oh, it. Oh, God, again. every time. Check back. Fact check me on this, but I'm pretty sure Tom Cruise's name has been in every episode yeah. so far. I, I will check that. I'll get back to you. I'll give you like a rundown of our first 10 episodes and a few statistics <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I, I tell the guy, I pick one, right? Yeah. And then it wasn't that crazy but i always get the same kind of thing it's pretty much um like just a comb over that's what i used to get <laughs> and then yeah, so, so what'd then, you pick it was, it was just a little bit fancier and okay. i don't remember i don't remember exactly what it was 
then I, I remember towards the end of the haircut, I was getting like kind of really depressed because it just looked exactly the same. As you did before? Well, as I always get, the haircut, the haircut. I always get. And then I yeah, realized, okay. I don't know when I realized, probably a long time later. I didn't know maybe if that, like maybe, I don't, I don't know what I was thinking at the time. But what I do know now is what, he, from think about from his perspective, this kid comes in that yeah. always comes in with his mum. Yeah. And he's the, he's not, I wouldn't say he's like the family hairdresser, but the, he, he know he knows us. Like he, yeah. he's, he's yeah. done my yeah. hair probably for like a few years. And I come yeah. in and my mum's not there. Yeah. And, I, go, and I go, I want that. And I wall. point at this one on the wall. <laughs> so I want that one. He's not giving me that. He just, he's like, yeah, sure, mate, sure, mate. Oh, yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah, that's, no, that's you good. thought he was going to go all Bridget Jones on you, like spin the thing around, you know, spin the chair. I don't know if that's a good reference or not, Bridget Jones, but he's going to spin the chair around and go, I'm going to make you a fucking star boy. And then yeah. he's like, does your hair and he's doing it really fast and he's whipping the hair around and you turn around and you are David Borneas from Angel or Buffy or whatever the hell or whatever you wanted. <laughs> you know what I mean? You actually were that. You went, yes. But, um, you know, you straight out of that place i hate i I, you know i i I find hairdressers the whole thing i find it quite traumatic um so like i just do it very little from that moment on i thought yeah yeah you do do it very little your your hair in uh in irl uh, in Mm. irl Mm. irl is um very similar length yeah yeah well it's just because it's traumatic i I think i had my ear cut by a hairdresser once with the with the clippers and um ever since then i don't know if that's exactly what happened it was mainly me like um trying to be cool in high school that was mainly the the long hair thing um and then you know maybe i'm just like maybe it was all the ear clippage that caused this uh to happen but I, i don't know but uh yeah is that the same I've never reason? picked one on the wall, that's for sure. Same reason you don't go to the dentist? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, that's a different one. That's a different one. Um, <laughs> the dentist one is like, um, imagine having like a super old car. Okay. And you know it needs getting, it needs fixing. Like you just know it does. And so you just don't even look under the hood. You know what I'm saying? You don't you want to see what the what the damage is, <laughs> <laughs> the cobwebs, the, yeah, the rust. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. it still it works fine, right? They're going to open it up and go, this car is 35 years old. And you go, yes. When, when was the last time you saw this? <laughs> <service?" laughs> that's, what, that's what's going to happen. <clears throat> we should start a GoFundMe for you going to the dentist. Maybe we can raise some money for charity or something. Like you only need like, I don't know, 200 bucks for a scale and clean or something. Yeah, look, um, yeah, look, I, I want courage, you know. I want to I want to feel courageous. So these things that I need to conquer are the things that I need to conquer. And <laughs> let's hope that I can report positively. You were just sometime. taking a steaming piss on like first world uh Oh, luxuries, totally. luxuries. Oh, You've totally. got like dentists and, and things, and you're just like, no, fuck dentists. Oh god, I don't need that shit in my life. <laughs> <laughs> so, what did your mum think oh. of the haircut? I think she was just happy as the same thing that I always get. Oh, I think oh, she I was, was probably devastated. ecstatic, man. I think she was probably loving it. Yeah, but well, the guy was worried. I think that if. I came home with anything. Oh, else. yeah. That's exactly what happened. She's turning up. That's oh, exactly what, what yeah. would have happened. But then I have had another emotional um, hair event, an E-M-E-H. Wait. Oh, a traumatic one. E-H-E. Um, traumatic, yep. Yeah. Oh. Whatever you want to call it. In year, I was, I'll send you a photo of this. In year eight, you may remember, um, I think I don't know if it was cool or I just thought it was cool. It was kind of like very boy band kind of time. So in year eight, we were mm. it was like late nineties. Mm. Is that right? Yeah, it's about right. Yeah, about right. It's about right. And I got the I got I went I went to the same hairdresser. It was probably the same guy. Can I guess? Did you get the tips? Did you get I got tips? tips. I got Ooh, the tips. I got the blonde tips. tips. Ooh, got that little boy. condom on my head. Oh and they, boy. Oh, it really hurts. They pull like individually through holes in the big condom thing. Yeah. They they pull the hair with tweezers so it's sticking out. And then they get pretty strong peroxide. And obviously your scalp and everything else is protected by the condom, so it's just on your hair. And they base that all on like a big, big like glazed ham. Mm. And then 
and then um, yeah, and I think I actually think it looked pretty pretty sick. But for for um, frosted tips, I think it looked good. Oh, <laughs> and then okay, so this was this was on Friday afternoon. Okay, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I think I look a million dollars. So this is the feeling I wanted when I got that when when I went to the hairdresser. You, you should have gone straight to school. You should have done it Monday morning just before school, school. Just before yeah. school. And so and I made a huge problem. My best friend saw me on Saturday. Right, mm. he thinks that looks awesome. Well, I don't know if he thinks that, but he the way he acted suggested he thought this because he then got his mum to give him a home job of just without the condom and stuff, just smashing peroxide. He's getting tippies as well. Yeah, but tippies, but it was just smashing peroxide on top of his hair. Yeah, right? cool. And <laughs> and and so then. Right, and, and and it wasn't such a, a good job. He looked it looked fine, but it wasn't like the pro job I, I had I had done right. So mm. now I'm turning up at school on Monday, and me and my bum buddy both have fucking peroxide in our hair. Yeah, I was like, I was like, bro, you, you, I was like, you're killing me, you're killing me. Like, I was really <laughs> excited to turn up on Monday with peroxide to be like a bit yes. different. And then yeah. my best mate turns up with the same thing, but it was like a, a home job. A bit, I wouldn't yeah. say botched home job. But no, you know, they do a good job. Yeah, do a good job. She did. She did great. His mum. His mum did great in this. She's oh not a head. The things we. The things we put our mothers through. <laughs> oh, I feel sorry for him. Looking back on it all. Of course. Did we get any more emails? Uh, uh, I, I I checked the other day. If you're listening, send us a fucking email just to check it works. All right, vacuous That's a good point. at mail dot com because we're only getting spam from Nigerian princes. Yeah, well, you know, and, and we're still yet to respond to um, what was it, Natalia Walter, uh, or, or the or the accountant. So that six million odd is just sitting somewhere, you know, and the twenty odd mil isn't going to charity. Get in touch, <laughs> Miss Walter. Get in touch. Um, other ways you can get it. You got any other ones? Oh, um, there's some classic ones. Oh, no, I, I don't even know. I'm trying to think of things just around the house. Um, can, can you get it washing? <laughs> I don't, I, don't think you can, I don't think you can get a washing man. Uh, but I know it. that they got desperate towards the end because they'd run out of all these hard jobs to get it from, these ways of getting it. They were running out. Okay. So they came up with this. You can get it pushing. Can you push? You can get it pumping, which pumping. is a guy doing push-ups. You can get it pumping. No, but what they managed to tap into is every man's dream way of getting it. Doing nothing at all <laughs> became a way of getting it. <laughs> now the labor's gone out the window. The guy who was lifting, the guy that was shifting, this guy's on a boat, yeah, with a line in the ocean, just not a care in the world, getting it. He's getting it. I can see the marketing team sitting yeah. around trying to think of yeah. the next one. They're like, we need to open this up to a broader appeal. We're being right. way too uh, rigid with the people with, with our scope here. Well, you know, not everybody works hard. How do we tap into that market? <laughs> <laughs> so what else? So so what else can you do? Because there's there what? How many adverts do you reckon there are? There's there's at least I'm going to say there's there's more than ten, right? Yeah, and I obviously in my in my deep dive into this, I didn't what didn't manage to find all of them. I would have only found some of them from the early nineties and late eighties and stuff. They're completely different, right? So if anyone's listening and they think they can get it some other way, could you just mm. send us an email? <laughs> yeah, good idea. Um, but you you could in previous times get it from reading the form that might, and it's just a bloke with a with reading the paper, you know. Reading Getting the it. form is in the, the, the horse, the, the ponies. Yeah, the horses and the, the the form. Yeah, oh. you could you, you used to be able to get it reading the form, um, but this is a classic one. Do you remember? And this might trigger a memory. Is it's a guy getting it right, and there's steam in his face, and he's just smiling through the steam at, at the at the thought of having it. I don't recall. He was pressing a suit. <laughs> Which was a way of getting it before. They went for that kind of corporate, you know, the corporate money there. But he's pressing the suit. He's the guy at the dry cleaner. <laughs> he's the bloke at the dry cleaner. And the funny thing is, is that the guy from the dry cleaner and the guy who was chopping and the guy that was mopping all get together to have a beer at the pub. But it's not just any beer, it's Victoria Bitter. 
We're not sponsored, by the way. Ice cold. <laughs> um, a long, cold Vic. You know, and they used to say that as well. But there was a couple of other ones that surprised me. You could get it doing business with the bank. And it's a bloke and he's celebrating this fucking like deal with the bank. Like, like <clears throat> so you shake hands with the bank and you go like, yeah, yes, yeah. with the arm pump. Like, it's fucking hilarious. And I'm hoping this will trigger you as well, a trigger memory yeah, as well, yeah. is that they used to say, matter of fact, I've got it now. Now, there'd be a lot of precursors to that that would rhyme with now. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of untapped ones in that space because there there are ways there are there are things that they say and then they say matter of fact i've got it oh, now okay um give me one to get me this get- is the weird one i've only got the weird one dude it's you can get it selling a cow Selling a cow. And it's the auctioneer bloke with the hammer in his hand and he's sweating. It's hard work being a cow auctioneer <laughs> guy. He's sweating profusely going, knocking the hammer down. He's like, matter of fact, I've got it now. And then he's at the pub drinking a long, cold Victoria Bitter. <laughs> you can get it feeding a black hole. Well, you should be able to get it feeding a black hole. It's so good, man. They're so funny, man. So what are the precursors to now? I, if, if that's the only one you've got. Uh, you can get it any old how, which is an all-encompassing one. Yeah. yeah. It lets everybody in. It reminds you can get it any of, old how. Of, um, of Bud, right? Bud Light. Mm, what was that one? Is it Bud? Don't, is they the ones just get yourself a Bud? Oh, wait, it no, was their slogan for a wait, little what, while. But that really generic one where it's just like um, – like the you know, it's just like the beer for all occasions or something like that. Oh yeah, I don't know that one, just, but I don't know. It's just like some generic. It's a bit like um, you can get it doing nothing at all. It's the same concept. So VB may have started something here. Genius, mm. genius. A great marketing team. Of course it is. It's 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 ingrained in a lot of people's heads, you know, and that's you know, it's it's deep. It's that yeah, child, I don't, I don't you know, that child brain watching advertising. You, they're just. Yeah. Oh man, we're um, we're sponges, we're sponges. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> dun. VB on tap, pretty good though. I, I do like good VB on yeah, tap. Yeah, you're a fan. Oh, I, haven't, I haven't been, I haven't been drinking really much at all. Actually, having said that, I'm drinking something right now, but um, but it's not a long cold Vic. No, it's a green apple infused hard seltzer that Rocky Rocky Ridge do. <laughs> we do great beers, by the way, but this isn't isn't one of their beers. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a bitch, bitch drink. Zero carbs, pop, rock, sour, green apple. <laughs> I uh, I think back to um, those days, like uh, the olden days. I think back to the 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 when we were in our late teens, or maybe even our teens, mm. where we weren't as good of friends as our later life, but we were still in the same friendship circle. We were good mates, and um, I was at a party, and I had to leave this party. Because I had a twenty-five year later suspected broken nose at this party, <laughs> and how I got this broken nose is my man Nate over here was headbanging to Rage Against the Machine around this party because that was you know that's what you do that's that that's, that's the jam that is the jam and he's headbutted me in the face and. I thought I had – I just thought I was in – I just I just had a bit of a blood nose, right? And, you know, uh, yeah, did you watch Stranger Things? Yeah. Making making blood noses cool again. Good on them, right? Bloody oath. It's about time that people – you know, the blood noses had the stigma removed from it. They're just blood noses. It's not a big deal, right? Everyone gets them every now and then. It's all cool. And anyway, I had this blood nose at this party and suspected 25-year-later broken nose. And, you didn't um, tell me about this, though, at the time. Yeah, well, no, I never told you. Until no, it was a long time later, yeah. Yeah, I told you about it when we were probably living together, like way yeah, later. Yeah. But I'm not surprised because I'm a bucking bull when I'm <laughs> a rage against the machine. Dude, if, um, if Bulls on Parade comes on oh, and you're not okay. headbanging around the party, something the party is shit, right? So it, it was, it was, it was it, you know, I didn't – obviously when it happened, I didn't think this guy's head butted me, you know. I just thought – I. 
I've been clipped. I was uh, now. I wonder how you went with it. Were you, were you sore at all? Because uh, I have a twenty-five year later suspected broken nose. Anyway, like <laughs> I, I got into the car and Mum picked me up. Mum picked me up from the party. I went home. Didn't think about it for like you know fifteen years. You know, didn't even think about it at all. That's why when I brought it up with you later in our lives, it's because that's when I was thinking about it. Because yeah. a friend of ours got uh, a nose job to correct a broken nose from his childhood mm-hmm. because he ran through a glass door. Which didn't break. Didn't break. So Nobody's nose just apparently just did. Uh, yeah, it's better. I mean, it's better if it breaks. Like if someone hits you on the head with a Jack Daniels bottle and it doesn't break, it just goes boom, that yeah. person's fucking going to be out. That yeah, thing yeah, yeah. like a baseball bat. Yeah, you want it to. You want, you that, want that. You want all the energy to go into that. Into Absolutely. That, uh, that glass. Absolutely. Um, but I, I, I really have to ask him whether or not the nose surgery thing uh, changed his voice in any way, right? Because I've got this theory that because the n- nose and the mouth is all connected and all that sort of stuff, that like I don't even know what my real voice sounds like. Do you know what I mean? Oh, so you think you've had this modified voice since you were 16 or 18? Well, 15. So when yeah. when I was already yeah. – my voice was already changing, yeah. Yeah, right? So, you don't really know, so, yeah. so there's this concept that I always think about, and I'll have to get this. I haven't even Googled a thing, you know what I mean? I'm just going off how I feel about it, right? But I have this like weird theory that this isn't like – well, this weird idea that this isn't my real voice and I've got this other voice that I've never, never heard before. <laughs> But I'd have to, I'd have to look into that. No, I don't. I don't think his voice changed at all. Actually, no, I don't think it did either. Yeah. Um, well, I apologise if I haven't. No, no, I don't I think that's necessary. Um. Yeah. No. Geez, we're talking a lot about from when we were when we were oh, back in the I day. That, that's I great. Know. That's great. I know. You know, I, I told this story to my mum the other night. I went to a party once and I said to my, myself, I was talking to my dad. I said, hey, dad, can I have some beers to go to the party with, right? And he said, of course, right? No worries, right? I would have been, I don't know, 15 or 16, right? Mm. And he's gone, no worries. And he's put three beers in the cooler bag, three beers, go to the party, Carlton Colts, three beers, going to the party. Three Carlton Colts, right? I think that's about right, actually, um, for a parent giving their child alcohol. I think three beers is is probably about about the about the mark. Like you're not going to get smashed, but you're, you're fitting in. On the way out, Mum puts three more beers in the cooler bag. <laughs> <laughs> no, your mum's a legend, though. She knows where it's at. She's like, no, no, no. We need this. We, we need Val to be cool. I probably had three beers and gave the rest out because I wouldn't have been able to drink six beers back I then. Drink no six chance. Beers I wouldn't be able to drink three beers now. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought that was quite funny. She denies that, by the way. I said that to her the other night. She said, no, I never did that. And I went, mm, I have memories. Maybe they're wrong. But, hey, I seem, I seem to remember this. Um, Man, the, uh, the beer advertising mm. must be do so well at – at permeating my subconscious that mm. I would be before I'd go out somewhere, I'd go to my mate's ha- ha- place. And if we had to, we would be necking warm Han premium lights <laughs> in his bedroom before we like, before we get taken by his parents somewhere. Cause we're trying to get fucking drunk. Yeah. 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 That was the goal. That is what the hell are we doing? No, it's right. funny, isn't it? Because um, getting really maggot, right, was about the coolest thing you could do in high school. It was. And the worst thing you could possibly do was be a tryhard. Now, I analysed that the other day. We're trying to discourage people, fellow fellow students, from trying hard. I mean, shame on you for excelling. Shame on you for trying to do well. What a fucking loser that guy is. <laughs> he's making us look bad, Aiden. That's right. That's right. Because oh, he's trying. Idea, right? We're not yeah. even trying, bro. And we're just gliding through. So stop trying so hard, bro. You're a try hard. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember the first time you got drunk? Um, sort of. I mean, it was. it's sort of – I wouldn't say I was drunk though. I, I, I know the first time I drank – 
Man, the first you know time I, mean? I can remember yeah. the first time I drank, but it, well, not the first time I got drunk. I That's remember, it. I remember yeah. drinking too much at um, one of my mates' houses, like where I think there was a little bit of alcohol, uh, but it was still kind of taboo mm. and not expected. And I think this is the first time I actually had like a decent amount. And yeah. I was going by the name Jimmy McNugget at that particular yeah. time. And that's when you look back on it afterwards and you, I got really kind of sleepy. I didn't didn't vomit or anything. But I was like, man, what the hell happened? Like I was lit, I was calling my I was just being so random. Like that's one of the appealing yeah. things about alcohol is yes. it it uh it dampens your it, it, it you get quite creative. I think it dampens your like anxiety. Yeah. And, yeah. and you're less worried about misstepping or doing something that's I don't you, 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 I don't know if it's more creative or what it is, but my theory is when you're young, I think half the appeal of drinking is it just reduces that 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 angst, that anxiety that you have. Mm. Just mm. like I mean, what a crazy situation you are as like a young teenage person where you don't know what the fuck is going on and you're in these crazy social settings of like, you know, 20, 30, 40 people. You're trying to you're trying to like get girls, but you don't know what you're doing or even yeah, why, yeah, of even why, right? <laughs> it's a, you're but, it's all, to- but it's all, it's all, we are social apes, man. We're all trying our best to fit in, to be part of the pack to, you know, that's what we want. We all want to be, you know, what we want that we want friends. I, I read something very weird today that, that relates precisely to that. I'm 10 pages into this book that's super well known and I'm sure millions of people I've, I've read it called Sapiens, and I don't even know the name of the the author. It starts with a Y, and it's basically about the evolution of um, the the Homo genus mm. from like Australis Pithecus to um, all the Homo things, like the Neanderthals, um, Homo erectus through to Homo yeah. sapiens. And the one thing that stood out that reminds me of what you're saying is we we were always middle of the food chain in that. We were we 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 prioritized larger brains and less muscle. We weren't an apex predator. We were, if anything, we were um, either running things down, like I've gone through in another episode. That's one theory. Another one is our niche may have been that our ability to use stone tools. We had really good dexterity with our hands, and we're pretty smart. So you would hang around when something else gets killed. You'd wait for all the other big prey to to eat everything, and we would crack marrow out of the bone so we'd use stone tools to crack the marrow out that other animals couldn't couldn't access and Mm, that that may have been our original niche right and then as you get smarter you start to exploit other things but yeah we started to when we all of a sudden we figured out how to like use fire and all everything else like our brains just basically sort of figured out you know science and technology and weapons and things like that we went from being something that was middle of the food chain, worried about being eated, eat, eaten. You got anxiety, fear, all those things which you need to have. Yeah, and of course. To the top of the food chain, right? And so now you're saying at the top of the food chain with still all these anxieties and things, whereas an apex predator has had millions of years, like think of a shark, that mm. great white, millions crocodile. of years crocodile being the top of the food chain. It has this like majestic quality mm. where it knows it's dominant. It doesn't fear. Yeah. Fear, right? Yeah. That really resonated with me. I was like, fuck, man, we've just gone too far too quick. Like we've got all these ape, we, we, we're like, yeah, m- yeah, sort of mid-tier kind of apes that fear all these things and now we're like running corporations and, and <laughs> it's like changing the landscape, you know, changing the planet. Yeah. Yeah, we change the planet. On a daily basis. We love it. We love that shit. I love Joe Rogan's thing about flying over LA. He goes, if you fly over LA, you come over the beautiful, I'm going to butcher this by the way, you come over the beautiful forests in California or whatever and you come across LA and it's smoke and it's there's like sh- this gray shit everywhere and like, you know, like the buildings are just like, you know, he'd look at that if it was on the planet, if you could see the planet holistically, he'd be like, that's fucking mold and it gets bigger every year. It gets bigger every year, you know, you know, it just spreads out. Um, and it's going to eat the whole sandwich is the way he puts it. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. Which is one day will be Coruscant, this the Star Wars planet that's just one big city. You know, it's just, mm. uh, probably go underground before then. If I'm being honest, uh, I don't think we'll. <laughs> I don't think we'll need to do that. Well, have you? I, I can't remember if I mentioned this in a previous episode or not. But I think if I did, I didn't go into any any depth. But they, this dude was interviewing Elon Musk and asked him what his what keeps him up at night. Yeah, we talked about this. And so population decline, right? Yeah, you talked about the population crash. Yeah, the crash. And it's interesting to think that we might be living on the – apparently they – who knows what's going to happen, but some people think that um, we're not – well, we, some people hypothesize we'll get to 9 mil and that would be about the crash. That would be the, the pinnacle. Um, but now they're saying that we probably won't even get to 9 mil. But things nine change. 9 mil, you mean? 9 bill. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> 9 mil. 9 bill. Um, if let's say it gets to nine bill and drops, we will live through the time where it's most populous on earth. That's a pretty yeah. wild thought, right? Yeah, that's crazy. That makes no sense. Are you saying that, uh, are you saying that there's like a population limit to planet earth and it's around 9 billion? No, no. It's, it's the fact that as we get more, the population decline type argument. Well, couldn't it boom yeah. back? Couldn't it come back? No, it could. Yeah, it could. But culturally and societally, we don't, as you get wealthier, like the, the statistics show as nations get wealthier, we have less children. As you get better educated and as you get more wealth and as nations get wealthier. Which is what Elon's scared of. Yeah. It, it, so Japan, in a, if you take that as like an example, but all countries are following suit, all countries. population we'll get Japan. cracking, get cracking on the robots, people. Yeah, we need robots soon to look after this elderly population. <laughs> the AIs, please. Yeah. Um, he goes, but that's my number one fear. You didn't let me say AI. That's my actual number one fear. And it's like, look, dude, we're going to have massive population crashes. We need the AI to be top notch. He's like, he's like, you don't understand. This is literally my two worst nightmares that you're talking about. <laughs> well, we'll see how this plays out. But apparently we are heading towards – or the statistics are a massive – drop in, 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 um, what do you call it? Like, I guess, so average, I think at the moment is around 2.4, but dropping and, 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 the, and, but that's in Western nations, but most people go, oh yeah, but like, you know, Africa and things are, you know, particularly East Africa, uh, have huge birth rates, but yes, they have huge birth rates, like eight or nine, but now they're only having six. So it's actually like a almost, you know, or, or five or you know, four, it's a bigger percentage drop in their, Mm, okay. And their numbers as well. And then Ni- apparently Nigeria is going to have a greater population than China at the end of this century. Wow. That's, 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 a, that's a little factoid I've never heard. Very interesting, right? You don't think of Nigeria yeah. being a, a powerhouse, but that's, that's um, you know, what the statistics show at the moment. I think that's okay. pretty, pretty clear. And then the other thing I was thinking of is say this population decline type argument is real. Let's just sort of – suspend disbelief and take it as a given. And then we've got – if you, if you start looking through that lens and looking through other things, I've been more conscious of that the last few weeks about the idea of population decline. And then you've got this policy shift in the US where they outlaw mm. abortion. Mm. I know that the people don't get together and make these kind of decisions, but – is 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 it possible that that you know some people lean wow. towards the idea that oh, we're heading we don't have enough we need population like we actually need people coming through we need to legislate to stop killing babies because we like nations but it's not the scientists right it's not the scientists putting their hands up and saying look um, this isn't about religion this is just about facts. <laughs> Well, the, the scientists in, in what sense, sorry? So it's more like the religious sort of side of um, politics that sort of has a voice here where they say you're, you're killing a, a baby or whatever. Like, yeah. you know, it's it's never like the scientists going, look, uh, population crashes. Elon's mentioned it a couple of times. They're really scary and we're heading for one. So um, you might, you know, please have the baby. <laughs> Well, I mean, there's a lot of factors, right? There's, a lot, there's lots of different views. There's heaps of ways you can cut it. Like it's such what a what a controversial issue. Like, and it's just happened, right? 
It's yeah. It only just that only just happened. Happened. We talked about it being like the leaked decision before, yeah. but now it's actually happened. So, holy shit! Mm. I was wrong. I thought it would. Uh, I was like, nah, you know. Yeah, well, you, wonder, you wonder how legit, uh, you know, like a report of a leaked decision is. And mm, it's, absolutely. Know, yeah, I mean, I remember hearing it was it was, but also as I said in when we were talking about it, um, I've heard um, TED talks previously saying Roe and Wade will be overturned. It's just a matter of time, and they suspected be in the next year, and it was less than a year. So it's, this is what I mean about almost being um, like almost like a policy decision in a way where people mm. see it coming. They go, oh no, nah, look, um, that they're gonna over over overrule that for whatever reason, and it mm. just seems a little. Um, I don't know, through the lens of a population collapse, I'm like, oh, it's just, um, it's like, oh, well, you know, that could be a, a factor. Uh, I Interestingly guess. timed. Some, yeah, maybe the judge the case, has a view. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if that would play into it at all. Probably not, but it's fun to talk about. Yeah, I don't really get it. Like if you're a Supreme Court justice, right? Like you're on the, you're, you're on the thing until you're dead. But like, do you still talk to people and go, hey, what do you think? Or are they just like, oh, no, I'm here because I've got, my the ideas that you know i'm here because of me kind of thing my ideas this is where i stand on this sort of stuff right mm. or are they like you know d trump puts a guy in like gets a guy or a girl in and goes hey look uh, we're gonna need you to vote this way on this thing because that's important to me you know they'd be like no no sorry man i'm the Justice Supreme Court, the, the um, the scutus or whatever. I can do, you know. I'm I'm the big swinging dick around here. No one tells yeah. me what to do. Is that how it is? I don't I don't really know. I haven't watched uh, the West Wing in a few I years. Did. I thought they have tenure, right? Don't judges? I know here they have tenure. Is that the same in the US? I want to get appointed. I think they just try and get someone in that has, you know, they try and load load the Supreme Court judges with, uh, you know, people that lean. Yeah, they're guys. Yeah, yeah, they're guys. But I find that so weird they can't just think for themselves. Like I don't understand why if you adopt one. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's yeah. a very strange landscape. And, yeah, I have watched a lot of The West Wing, right, but I still don't get it. Um, but I do like that show. CJ, what a legend. Um, man, this is... Um, something that I've seen a little bit of. It's, it's completely unrelated, but I wanted to mention it to you. The I don't know if you've seen them because you don't watch much AFL, do you? Not every no, not every not not every weekend even. Man, there have been some. I watch highlights though. Well, well, you probably won't see these in the highlights because it's just wrong. So there's been three head clashes in the last three weeks. Oh my god! Of that where two people are uh, sort of wrapping around one guy trying to tackle them and they might not yeah. see it. And it's all happening so quick, just both their heads collide. At, at, it's like two bowling balls bouncing. Slightly up. different to head banging at a party to rat them. Different type of headbutt, Some mostly in the form of a tackle gone wrong. Or, well, or the headbutt to rat them was um, your soft part of your head on my hard part of the head, presumably like mm. the back or something. You, I think you were walking past me or something and I just like you know kicked back. Yeah, yeah, give me one, yeah. Whereas this is both the soft part of the faces generally <laughs> pushing together. Or the foreheads colli- colliding, which is also oh, very bad. So bad. I, I have not seen, like I can't watch them. Like I, I actually feel sick. Um, was there any knockouts? As a, Was anyone knocked out? Oh, yeah, like stretches. Uh, only one, this is oh, the thing, God. only one person ever comes off. Like one person normally has a lot of blood, but they're fine. And, and the other guy all, usually the goes The energy for kind of has to end up in someone's head. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, <laughs> like one person mm-hmm. is the billiard bowl getting struck. Yeah, and the other person's the white ball. And just just so we know, is it better to be the billiard ball or the one being struck? So wait, so the white ball or the coloured ball? Is that what yeah, you mean? but obviously, like you don't want to be, you know. Okay, let's say there's one ball, coloured ball, and white you get the cue ball. Do you want? To, you don't want to be the cue ball, right? Or do you want oh, to be the cue the ball? White ball? Is that yeah? You want to be the white ball. I think you want to be the white ball. Yeah, you want to be supplying the energy. So when you see someone headbutt someone, like if you come up to someone and grab someone's lapels, you want to be the one. Get in there first, right, with your headbutt. Don't wait for them to headbutt you. <laughs> you, you headbutt with the the, uh, the the hard part, the front of your head. 
You, we're not giving headbutting tips. Your prefrontal cortex right into their the bridge of their nose. Mm. Well, headbutting was legal in the UFC or at least one version oh, of God. the UFC. God and damn. it's it's frightening. Like I've seen guys on the ground just full mount, just getting headbutt. It's not cool. Like, <laughs> but these are unintentional uh, head collisions oh, in no. AFL for the and majority. They're running, they're running so fast and that's full the problem. Speed. At least sometimes, at least – when you're in a fight, you know you're in a fight and hopefully you see it coming. Those the ones that rail people are the, the hits when uh, it comes from a weird angle or they're stunned and they don't see it coming and they're just limp and the fist goes right through their face. If you can tense for the hit, you, you're in, you, you can take it. You often, is, that you, why, you, um, is that why you think fouls, like we watched the UFC on the weekend, when someone gets kicked in the um, cup, like in the balls area, if someone gets poked in the eye, they halt the action because I had this thing that I said to you on the weekend. I was like, it, because it's a fault, it hurts more because they're not allowed to do it because like, oh. you're not allowed to kick people in the balls and because you're not allowed to poke people in the eye. It's, it hurts more. Like the, the way that – like because I've seen guys in fights in the UFC take 50 leg kicks in a row, 50 body and, and kicks. They don't and wince. They don't wince. They yeah. don't look angry. They just look – in fight mode, but if you pop, pop a kick in the balls, I mean, I know they're the balls. I know, I know that that is debilitating, but they, there's no, the poker face is gone if you get poked in the eyes, you know, or anything like that. It's just immediate, like because they're not allowed to do it. They are soft spots, though, as well. They are. It, it, it seems, seems like, like everyone rules yeah. against it. Sure. Yeah, it sure. seems like every little one seems to be a huge problem, doesn't it? They, they do react strongly to those. But maybe they want to – yeah, it's an opportunity for a little break maybe as well. But it's a break for you and him. Any 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 advantage that the other person also gets is not really an advantage, but that's how I, just, I feel about mm. it. Mm. But um, if you want to – if you're about to finish the fight, that's different. Like if you were, if you were close to – and then they go, nah, stop, that's different. Anyway, go on. Uh yeah, so there's been some clashes, and you don't. They're the worst, they're some of the worst AFL injuries I've seen of late, mm. actually. And mm. I don't know if there's anything to do with the rules at the moment that makes it more likely. Um, I don't know about like you know the, the way they're. I don't know the way they're tackling. Uh, I don't know. I've no idea. But the AFL is one thing. Um, my girlfriend plays AFLW just for um, a local amateur team, right? Yeah, like low low division stuff. That is the most brutal shit I've ever seen. Yeah, it is. It is so brutal because the ball is always in dispute. Like, they're, they're rarely are they possessing it with any. Like, you know, in AFL games, they only take the heat out of it a little bit. You chip it around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the whole if game. But if the ball gets spilled a lot, then yeah, this is where injuries happen, right? This is yeah, where of course you lose the coal face. It's ninety percent of the game. Uh, it is just hectic. It is trench warfare. Like it, you're not allowed to soccer either. So it's just, it is on. It is on. You can't soccer. You can't soccer. You can only soccer if it's in the goal square for a goal. Wow. I think that they're encouraging you to pick it up. Yeah, but to pick it up, you have to go through the trenches. You the have trenches. To... The tre- it is trench warfare. Um, <laughs> it's it's so hectic watching. But the funniest thing is they're physios, right? So you can imagine in C5, which is like the grade, the physios they have are normally like third-year physio students and stuff, right? So but the injuries they get are like World War One. Yeah. Yeah. So could you imagine a third so, year? Have you seen some pretty hard injuries at these games? Oh, people get stretched off every game, every game. I saw, I saw a bone sticking through this girl's No. Face. I'm not kidding. I don't even know how she happened. I don't know if it happened on the ball or what. She was – yeah, so and so think about this third-year physio, right? That, you know, she's strapped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and this girl comes off like yeah. in, in a state, you know, oh. in a calamity, and she's freaking out, as you would. There was no blood. Oh. There was no blood bone just like popped oh. right through <laughs> he was holding all the blood like like a, oh, like a, no, like a no. shower cap or something um oh. like it, they're car crashes man and the girls don't they're very unpredictable and they don't have a lot of training with how to fall so say you've got an eight-year-old that grows up playing footy and he falls over every day of his life you know he's just a fucking rat bag um jumping and falling and tackling and you 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 you, you absorb these um these skills and abilities um passively without even having to train 
these very important skills and abilities, by the way. If you're out there, you're not like throwing yourself around and stacking it every now and then. Get get on with it. Come well, on. These, these girls are like young, early 20s, but they don't have a history of, of rolling. Well, that's, that's just because the game, you know, AFLW, um, it, although women's like AFL is nothing new, um, it's sort of more people are doing it now. Oh, and because more people are doing it, more people are going to do it when they're younger. And then you're going to have these rat bags, as you describe them, um, who will be absolute demons. Oh, man, they're going to be so agile. They're going to be great. Like, it's going to be so good. I mean, there already are great, great female players, but like I don't really Absolutely. pay attention. Like, um, but the, the, the overall quality will, will rise so quickly. So yeah. Give it 10 years, it will look wildly different. Because once you get the 10-year-olds – in at 20 and now they're yeah, playing. Yeah, of course, of course. It's going to be amazing. Well, people um, are going to miss the trench days as well. People are going to oh, miss I'm, those I'm, days. I'm really enjoying it. I'm really – I just sit back. <laughs> I sit back there in the stand. <laughs> It'll be the roaring 80s. They'll talk about it like the roaring 80s. You yeah, know? Eating a chicken burger. There's just, you know, there's – Chaos. Um, oh, my God. It's everything, everything. I've never seen so many. It's so Have wild. Seen a fight? Have you seen a fight? They're, they're pretty good, actually. I've seen oh, some – they're not. There's been a little, little tiffs here and there, but they're actually very well behaved. Um, a lot of the sports that I played when I was young, there wasn't really fights that often, except that like occasionally at the old man's softball game, they might, they might, you know, sometimes the bench is clear, you know, <laughs> sometimes the benches are clear, you know, do you, do you get angry in a softball game. Like, do you, do you pitch it at them or do you call it a pitch when you, in softball? Uh, yeah, it's a pitch. It's just a soft, it's just a pitch. How, how yeah. Can you throw underarm at someone? Is that a concern? Um, um yeah 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 you could hurt someone yeah i know that i know but that. it's more just like um like the the way that it used to happen is the catcher would get cleaned up you would clean up the catcher that's how it usually went down if they because, drop the ball, you're in the clear right if yeah you it them, used to be the rule that used to be the rule that's no is longer that, the rules is that, not, is that not the rule anymore Nah, it's yeah. some bullshit now. I'm sure John Boy's done a billion videos on them, but um, no, it John, used to be if he's he's a yeah he's a American YouTuber, one of the best um, mm. at sports. Yeah, I've probably I've probably shown him uh, stuff of his in the past, but uh, he does a lot of baseball videos, and yeah. um, yeah, it used to be like I remember my brother cleaned up the catcher once, um, in a softball game, just like they had the ball on the line, you know. And my brother extended his hand at yeah. oh, okay. the catcher's face and like pushed them to the ground and then he touched home base. Thought he was a fucking hero. And then the umpire said that does not count. And Brody got really upset. It's really funny. <laughs> Um, it's, I just need to close out on these female injuries, right? Because I've got a personal one. Um, last year, my girlfriend uh, head clash. Head clash, right? I don't know if it was an elbow or a head clash. Um, popped her nose open um, oh, no. right, at, right at the bridge um, and there's blood pissing everywhere. Um, we go to emergency hospital because emergency uh, ginger up, what do you got? Department, what the fuck it is. Because she, they, they looked at it and the people are like, oh, you're going to need a couple of stitches there. And because it's just right on your face, you want it to heal up well. Mm. And, you know, we're, we're hanging around. It, it wasn't really bleeding or anything at this stage, but – when we're waiting to be, the nurse is having a look at it in the little room there and she says, you're going to need to get some, we you have to give you some stitches. We can't just use the putty or the the um, the, the little band-aids or whatever they use. You're going to have to get some physical stitches. Okay. And, and um, she's also got, got an x-ray and they're like, yeah, your nose is broken. So yep. the girlfriend has never had a broken bone, never had any stitches, yep. doesn't like needles, Um you know, it, it's a perfect storm, right? So she's – and the, the nurse leaves the room and girlfriend starts uh, breaking out into a few tears because she's a bit worried about the effect it's going to have on her face. She's got a lot going on in her mind. Um, she doesn't like needles, so she's like, oh, I'm going to have – I'm getting needled between the eyes, getting stitches. Like I'm going to look like some kind of, you know, <laughs> teddy bear or something. And then yeah. – and so she's, she's got a lot of uh, – she's very emotional and I'm, I'm holding her hand standing next to her. And the, the nurse goes in to give her the local anesthetic to so she can get stitches. And I'm watching really closely. I'm fascinated. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm watching the needle. She keeps putting it in and out 
at near the wound. Inside the wound, she squirts a little bit of anesthetic. She pokes the skin, like all, all around. She's jabbing all around the wound. Just And every time she injects a little bit of the fluid, I can see the skin rise up and then it dissipate through into it. And I'm thinking, wow, this is great. And what then, the fuck? <laughs> I mean, this is just, this is so wild. And then the next thing I know, I'm looking up at the ceiling and there's a nurse holding my legs in the air and and there's a bit of commotion and I'm like, what's, what, what is happening? I said, I'm instantly, I said, oh, I'm so sorry. I think I just started apologizing. I didn't know. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, I don't know. They're just like, no, just stay here. I had two nurses tending to me. Um, there was only one nurse like d- stitching up Christy in the room originally, but I create, oh I felt God. back. So my eyes rolled back and the, luckily the wall was only maybe three feet or two feet behind me. And so Christy's about to get her, her stitches and then, I, my eyes roll back. The blo- I had a drop in blood pressure because I think I'm, I was, um, I don't know, feeling some anxiety or empathy for her position. I don't, I'm not good with needles either. I don't know. I don't know what was going on. I, I any- think it was probably that you were fixated on the thing that they'd be like, Hey man, don't, don't watch this. <laughs> you're, like, <laughs> you're, like, you're like, but it's so cool. And then the next thing you know, you're looking at the ceiling. The girlfriend was freaking out because she just felt this tension in her arm because I was holding on to her. I was holding her hand like nice and close oh, to it, man. and she oh, feels this so tension. Funny. She looks at me, and I'm I'm sliding <laughs> the wall with my eyes rolled back in my head. And, she, and the Isn't that like, unbelievable? Oh, God, yeah, and dude. Then, how useless would we be in the fucking wild? We'd see something and our eyes would roll into the back of our heads, and then we're on the deck for a while. <laughs> How bad would I be if I was the third year physio at the girls' game? We'd like bones. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we need two stretches. We need two stretches. Yeah, I caused more of a problem. Um, like, yeah, yeah. Like, so I had two nurses. I hit my head a little bit on the wall because that, that obviously happens when you just. That's so like, scary, man. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, that was. Unbelievable. Pretty embarrassing after, you know, people ask how she's going. Oh, I had your broken nose. Oh, yeah, like. Yeah, I'm fine, but you know, Matt's <laughs> causing a scene. Yeah, yeah, of course. No, but I do recall another um, big event that happened at the softball, and that was a guy charging home plate. My dad was catcher. Ooh, don't charge your dad on home plate. Fuck it. So my dad's catching. He didn't usually catch. He it wasn't his usual spot. Um, but um, he's on the line, and their shoulders have clashed. They've had a shoulder clash. And dad may have dropped the ball. I don't know if he got the out or not, but I just know that he started screaming in pain because his shoulder, like he completely like dislocated his shoulder or whatever. I don't know. Maybe just dislocated his shoulder. And I remember him yelling and it was when my nan was there. She was quite old at the time. She gave me like, you know, 20 cents and told me to go buy the entire shop that day. Um, you know what I mean? Like she, yeah. I, you know, she said, "Go, go and get some lollies. Um, here's some money. Oh, get yeah. me a can of, get yeah. me a can of lemonade, and get and get yourself something nice as well." And she gave me like twenty cents. Uh, I I couldn't do it. I had to go to my mum and say, "Hey, could you give me some more money? Need some Start. real money? Yeah, yeah." Because like and she said, she was going to get me something as well. I was thinking killer python or something. So it's like sixty cents right there. So I already can't afford the lemonade. But anyway, there, there was a time. Sorry, there was a time where you could get three lollies for five cents. Like I remember being at the train station uh, in early days, like maybe year six. I, I went. To, I used to catch the bus and stuff to school before high school. At, so I don't know if it was then, but I used to get um, like three clouds for five cents. But then it started with five cents per cloud. Those red clouds. Wow, is and that then, what it is now? No, it's, What's it's, it now? it's like ten, like, pro, like ten cents a cloud. No, yeah. it can't be 10 cents a cloud. Yeah, I don't know. We need, uh, yeah, but anyway, sorry. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> anyway, the point is my dad started swearing because uh, of his shoulder. And I think my nan at the time, she was going, language. She was getting really upset at him, even though he was in agony. Yeah. I mean, he just went straight to the hospital, I think. I think they just went somewhere. I don't know. I think he, he went pop, Did he pop it out? I don't know if it was that or something a bit crazier. I don't know. But other guys, like my little brother, he he'll dislocate his shoulder, and like I, I think I, I've seen him pop it back in a few times. Uh, not fun. No, nah, well, I think I think that's what we've I think we've tapped into something because like the hairdresser thing, the other thing. Um, I'm just not a fan of like any potential pain. 
You know what I mean? They go, do you want to do this thing? And I go, is there any potential pain involved? And they're like, yeah. I go, no, no I'm all right. You, you, had, you, you said that the hairdresser, they were pulling on your hair to get the peroxide in, you know. There are people yeah, who yeah. go to the hairdresser and, you know, maybe, they, you know, they just go, just do whatever fucks me up the most, you know, like get, you know. They, they must I, I don't think pain. anyone goes there just to you get. You know what I'm saying, you know pain. what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, that's not the metric. Obviously, I'm just, I'm just having a laugh. But uh, you know, they, they're like willingly engaging in these potentially painful activities. Oh man, I do it all the time. I think that's you know the, <sighs> the cold showers is a thing. Last night, because the Tour de France has started, the cold showers thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've realised how, um, how dire my position is because I don't ride heels at the best of times. In six weeks, I'm riding just the most insane mountains. I know I've gone on about this before, but mm. it's just all dawned on me because now I'm watching cycling and and I'm thinking, I was realising how inadequate I am. So I'm trying to find hills. I went out last night at 8.45. I live in a pretty hilly area and just started riding around the streets, just up and down hills, just trying to find as many hills as I can. Mm. I did 40 minutes and I did 300 metres of elevation. And then that's, you know, a bit up and then a bit down, a bit up because there's, there's no constant. <laughs> and what kind of elevation are we talking about over there? Well, one of the decent mountains is yeah. 1,400 metres of elevation in the one ascent. Oh, boy. Okay. So, and I was a bit oh tired. Oh, boy. Three minutes of going up and down. I'm getting breaks in between. So, yeah, I should, yeah there's no breaks coming. I was running out of time, so I just had to go to bed. But, like, I needed every second day, I just need to get – I need to ride a hill. So it's, it's quite, it's, it's a little bit painful in that you get lactic acid build up. Of course. But I kind of, I think it's quite nice. Of um, course. But I'll send you, my Strava is just an absolute dog's breakfast. I'll send it to you. It's just like, cause I'm just riding streets. I just got a lot on my bike. I'm just, I'm just like finding, I'm like, is that a hill? Like, oh, take that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I, yeah, there's nowhere good to practice. There's nowhere good to practice. I, I went to Mount Street in the city on Saturday morning and was just riding, riding up and down that just as, and that's about 10% gradient. The, I mean, surely there's some forums for this stuff. Shouldn't you be able to go on a forum and be like, hey, I'm doing a hill? No, oh, the, the biggest know? one oh, – sorry, I, I did um, – Friday morning I did Mount Strait. On Saturday I rode uh, into Kalamunda, and the best one here is riding up up mm. the Kalamunda Hill. So that's five kilometres at 5%. Um, I'm doing like regularly mm. – in one, regularly I'm doing 20 Ks at 5% mm. and that's one of the two mountains on the day. So mm. I don't know if I can do back-to-back -back four of them all in one go. But Jesus. Last, last night I, I even took the measure of not pumping. Like you, you lose air in your tires pretty quick. I'm trying to make it as hard as possible for myself so I just didn't pump my tires up. Yeah. But they're still, they're still um, enough to ride on. Like heap, they're heaps enough to ride on but – Normally, if you want to be really efficient on a road bike, which is what your goal is, you want to ride as fast as you can and efficiently, you mm. want tires to be pumped right up because it's way more efficient because less of the tire is touching the ground, so it's less friction. Nobody writing this down? Pump your tires up. <laughs> Pump you. Well, that's the only thing. I go like riding with our mates that don't ride much for like the charity rides and stuff. Yeah. I get there and I've got my pump and I'm like – yeah, you guys need some air? And they're like, well, you're supposed to pump them up. I'm like, yeah, man, like every time, like every time. Like they'll pump it up <laughs> once. You know when you're a kid, you pump it up like a month later, you pump it up. I was like, no, no, you need to do it every time. So you just pump it up when it gets when it gets flat? That's when you pump it up, when it gets flat. That's how you know. That's yeah, how you know it's time for the puppies. at 100 PSI and mm. your tires on your car sit at like 32 or 30. Mm. So it's, you know. Three that's, presumptuous, that's presumptuous of you. And, and, and yeah, your, your tires are being five. <laughs> You're like, nah, it's like a dentist, like, you know, someone <laughs> do that. But um, I looked like a complete galah last night because I've got, I'm wearing my glasses. I don't wear much. I've got these yellow socks, a green hat. Mm. Like this blue, I, I just look like a, just a, a fool, right? And um, I got some, some funny looks out there. Um, there weren't many cars, but, you know. <laughs> People love to hate on a cyclist. Yeah. yeah I mean, there are good. some wanker cyclists. I'm, Absolutely. They're definitely, definitely some, some wanker, wanker drivers too. There's some wanker drivers. Absolutely. Some guy threw a hamburger on mate the other day. Out what? his car. He threw a hamburger. Half of a hamburger? Uh, I reckon it was three quarters. Oh, man. That's oh, how oh, oh, He threw, he threw like, a hamburger what, at you? Not at me, my mate. 
there was just just outrageous. Just, yeah. What the fuck is wrong with people? Yeah, people are wankers. Yeah, but do you remember what do you remember what life was like in high school? Um, like just imagine those pricks still kicking yeah. about. Yeah. Not us. We were okay. But there were jerks. There were I'm jerks. Not gonna name any names, but I'm not gonna name any names. But I, I, I do remember a story of a bus stop. There was a bus stop yeah. and the bus went past this bus stop every day. And sometimes people would throw stuff from the bus at the kids at the bus stop because they were from the rival school across the road or whatever, right? Or throwing some stuff, yeah, yeah. They had to throw like, I don't know what they threw, like, you know, the classics. They'll throw eggs. Eggs. You know, mm. they'll chuck an egg. They'll egg them, yeah, because you egg cars. You egg them. Egg houses and you egg people, apparently. I don't know. I don't do any of this stuff. And I wasn't involved in any of this shit either. But there was a day where some off milk was the weapon of choice, Mm. some like sour milk. Mm. And I remember everybody's there at the bus stop waiting for the bus, just being kids, just being high school kids, guilty. They were all guilty of that. (laughs) <laughs> and the bus rolls up, the window gets opened, and this one-liter bottle of carton of milk hits the bus stop at the top, like hits the stop itself. Yeah. It's not one of those bus stops that has an undercover thing. It's just the bus stop, you know, that that very small rectangular obelisk thing. Yeah. <laughs> right? Hits that. And just explodes over the whole crowd. And everyone on the bus thought it was just great. Oh, they would have been cheering. It was so fucking awful, man. Just just now thinking about it, obviously, it was really bad. Oh, man. It's better than, um, yeah, egg, eggs out the window. I swear that's why they brought in the buses with no windows. Genius. Mm, that ruined the game. We cannot be trusted. No. You cannot give a human being being... Windows, it's mm. it, what it is. Is it's a lack of accountability. It's a bit like when people just blast people on Twitter and social media and stuff. Yeah, it's like going past someone <laughs> with an open window on a bus and just be like, "Fuck you!" That's like, <laughs> like that's like the exact same thing. You don't get the feedback of the poor person <laughs> milk on them, and you feel oh. good. You're like, man, I just blasted them like sour oh. milk, like oh. rotten eggs, whatever. Like they just copped it. And you don't yeah, care. we need buses on windows on the internet. We need we need we need we need windowless buses on the internet because, um, you know, all you can hope for about those those people is that you know they grow up every ten years and they look back and they go, holy fucking shit, what a fucking little shit I was. Like that's all you got to hope, right? But then you don't you need to pass that on. This is the wisdom. Of being mm. an adult. They do need to, and they do usually. I guess they try. I guess they try. I hope and they the funny thing is, is that parents could say all day, don't be a fucking idiot, son. Don't be a fucking idiot. I was a fucking idiot. Don't be an idiot. All right? They can do that. But you'll be like, yeah, I'll find out for myself. Thanks very much. You know what I mean? I'm still going to I'm still gonna learn the hard way. Thanks very much. Thanks for the warning that you can sort of botch this, but uh, I got you. All good. <laughs> It's great. Hey, um, my family, right? You, you're, and you, you like a bit of poker. Oh, love it. Love it, yeah. If I was to have my, my family here, I've got my, my father, my mother, mm. my two brothers and me. Mm. We're all poker players. Who do you think – if you had to pick who was the best, who do you think it is? Hmm. I don't really know what kind of game they have. I find it hard to go with your mum or your dad because I don't like. I you think haven't I, played enough poker. You haven't played yeah, enough like poker. I don't, I don't know how much if they play poker at all. It's like pointing at someone walking down the street and being like, "Do you reckon they're good at poker?" Like I know your parents more than that, but I just the person, I know the person. I reckon your your dad would be impossible to read. <laughs> impossible. Like I think you play mind games. Oh, he talks a lot, yeah, no, for sure. Really, at the table, the He'll problem talk a lot. is yeah. I would never put him on a hand. So if he had a hand, I'm done. Mm. Yeah, done. yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. He plays a bit of that game. Um, he likes that sort of game. Um, I, I, look, I'm going to go with uh, – and it's not even, it's not even uh, 
intelligence. I think it's the ability to uh, not lo- – not, I, re- I reckon some of you get – like not getting caught out with having nothing and mm. being able to like back out of a situation. I'm going to go – I think L will be able to be consistent that's my mm-hmm, all right mm-hmm. that, that's that's my that's my pick well, but um, i also know his game i know yours i can't pick you right that's just boring i know no, his no, no. It, it is it probably is, his game is is, is uh, yeah i don't know him i don't know much about his as well he'd be a chance he'd be a good chance here's the thing man it's actually mum <laughs> what's a what's a strat it's not about a strat man a strat doesn't matter right she knows what you're thinking Nah, she's a conservative, smart, top 10 hands of poker player, man. She's the best player. Mm. She is the best player. And uh, well, so like about maybe eight months ago, I downloaded a poker app for computer, right, so I could play mm. poker with my friends. And we'd enroll in the same tournaments and completely shark the field because there's six of us who are playing together, mm. um, talk, talking shit, um, and then there's like two other people on the table and neither of them have a great chance to win against all of us, right? But once it's all us, then we're playing hard poker, right? Of course, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, and that was kind of why we did it in the beginning. So we could play some online poker. Um, it's not for money. It's actually very difficult to gamble for real money in Australia um, for poker. It's so it's now. just all play money. It's just all play money, right? Mm. And, um, you know, you get you start with like 20 grand and you'll go in some tournaments and maybe you'll get up to like 100 grand or 200 grand and then you'll go in the bigger tournaments, the 40 grand ones, you know, you know how it goes. And then all of a sudden you're doing um, what's my usual now? Probably a five or twenty million, you know, tournament. That's what I'm sort of enrolling in nowadays. Twenty million chip Bowling. tournaments. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, because you know I'm not a bad player, right? Mm. But they also have like a leaderboard. You get ranking points for scoring highly in tournaments. For um, you know, going like if you if you go above fifty percent in the tournament, then you're not going to lose any points. You know what I mean for your leaderboard status. Mm. And I can tell you, yeah, with evidence that my mum was ranked number, get this, one. I was going to say, what? In the world. <laughs> what? Hell yeah. Number Man, one. Can get her to a casino? And the funny thing oh, is, yeah. right, is can I, she, can said, I oh, no. she, she said, um, she said, oh, no, it's like, um, it's like you guys with your games, you know, you play games a lot and you get you get good at them kind of thing. And I was like, none of us have been number one on anything, right? Except for one thing. I have been number one on one game, you know, on the leaderboards. Oh, I have yeah. been number one. AFL, Evolution, uh, <laughs> multiplayer, online mode, right? Uh, long story short, their fucking leaderboard system's bugged out to fuck, right? Yeah. Because... Me and my brother played a game against each other. I lost, and I've been number one ever since. <laughs> really? Ever since? You still are? I lost the game, and it ranked him number- second and me first, right, which he was confused at, but I sort of explained to him that it's just sort of sort of taking into account all the things. It's not just the game that matters. It's, it's a complex like, you know, algorithm that's it's understanding. It's, see, it can appreciate your complex. movements. Like the way you you, you you sort of manipulate, you get Pritis to, to go left, then go right. Yeah, yeah ball. exactly. It's you can just, see the potential. I think it's actually factoring in the potential. It's ranking us. It's not scoring us. <laughs> it's ranking us, right? So I was number one for like a year, maybe more. I'm probably still number one. It's unbelievable. So like that. me and my mum have that in common. We have both been champions the, of the, the world. Best, the best. The best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, who, for who are our new um, gambling overlords at Crown? Didn't with the, the, the Crown sale, I hear there's a bit of an acquisition. Yeah, so there's a well, there's an investment company that's bought Crown. Hmm. Yep. Yeah, I'll, be, they, I'll yeah. be giving my money to them from now on. Yeah. Yeah, not that I really. Yeah. If, if I do, I do want to yeah. yeah give some money to the casino. Yeah, I'll give it to them. Got yeah. no other option really. Yeah, but um, you know, my mum no, would never play for like real money. You know, it's those those games on the internet because they give you lots of chips and it's a lot you sort of get for free and stuff. You look like you're up even when you're just sort of probably breaking even. You know what I mean? You're going, hang on a second, a hundred and ten million dollars up. By the way. My mum's account, yeah, I had a look at it the other day. 
this is free chips, obviously, but thirty six billion. Oh, imagine if they were real dollary dues. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She's a funny one. Oh, and another another thing. Update, right? Update on the story mm-hmm. because she was here the other day. I asked her that uh, what happened when when Dad came back from seeing me with the shower, with the head. shower head and the spanner. And I said, uh, I need to know if, um, you know, if you believe him, if you believed him, what you said when he said he fixed it already, what did you say? And she said, oh, okay. And she didn't question it until when she came to my house, she noticed that there was still clothes like in the spare bathroom. Mm. She's like, why would there be clothes in the spare bathroom if he's fixed it already? Yeah, she's too smart. So she started doubting me. Then apparently, this is what mm. she told she told me, and I said I was disappointed in her for not calling dad, like, and just saying like, look, he probably didn't do it. He probably lied to you. You know, I'm I'm a bit surprised that she didn't pick that up, right? And I said, but do you think it's done? Like, do you think it's done now? And she said, yeah. And I said, you know, but when. When you, he said, have you done it? The actual answer was, no, I haven't done it. But now I have done it. And she goes, so you have done it. I said, yeah, I've done it. It's done. Does she believe? She, yeah, she believes me. She yeah. believes me. And it's, like it's a, true. It, like it, it helps. It helps. It helps. True. You can't get anything by her. <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah. Well, she, her. You, can't, you can't bluff the number Don't one. Don't fuck with the number one. Yeah, in the world. <laughs> no, I was really happy for her because she's um, she just did it like that. She just plays, you know, enough. And here's here's another fun part of that story is that she's um, she's kind of using roids. <laughs> How do you do roids in in poker? Okay. I'm glad you asked. So um, like that. We're trying two to think months- about it like just some kind of like. <laughs> Like mental bullshit that you're nah, you some nah, kind nah. of. I'm talking yeah. like actual roids for poker. Poker roids. You so, say that like it's a thing. Yeah, it's a thing. Okay. It's a thing. Right. So, like uh, two months into them playing, um, I go down. I go down and see them at their holiday house, like that, where they live, basically. And um, I said, "Give me a look at your app. Like, give me a look at your poker apps. Like, let me let me see them." And I found that they all had these unclaimed gems, right? Because they don't care about that stuff. They just want to play poker, right? They don't care about all the other parts of the game that are in the client to like, you know, give you pats on the head. They don't want the pats on the head, right? Yeah. They're not there for the pats on the head, but I am. You know, so I want to see how many gems they've acquired. So I like go through, start claiming all their gems, and I'll be like, cool. So now you can open these chests and get like 10 billion mm. chips inside, like potentially, mm. because you put in all this hard work. And now I'm here to tell you that there's actual payoffs to, to your hard work, and we're just going to dump all these now. It's going to be great. So we've got all these new avatars for them, all these new table things for them, all this stuff, right? It's all good. And, um, Mum called me up one day and she goes, "What's an XP boost?" Ooh, she's in danger. And I now. went, I went. It's probably like boost the the champion points that you get at the end of the game, you know, for a, for a sort of period of time. Mm. I said, "Why? Well, how, how many do you have?" She goes, I've "Got 165." <laughs> so I use one each time, so you can use one on a game or whatever and double the experience on that, or is it a period of time that you? I don't think it'd be double. But it'd be like maybe I don't know how much it would be, but yeah, yeah. Essentially, it's an hour. It will last an hour. So she's accumulating them now yeah. at a rate that she could never spend them now because she's got that uh, that buffer. She has permanent XP boost. Exactly. She wanted, yeah. Exactly. And then I had this theory that everyone in the top sort of fifty is doing XP boosting. Like you know what I mean. So it's not like it's proper steroids because I'm like everyone else is probably cheating as well, mum. So don't worry about it. I don't even worry about it. Number one. Man, number her, one. Her, her dopamine receptors are just getting flooded, I'm sure. I'm sure the setup of that thing is, you know, ticking yeah. off boxes. Yeah. She actually rang me up one day and she said um, she had like $2 billion in her account or something. And she rang me up and she said, 
I accidentally enrolled in a billion tournament. <laughs> and I said, oh, no. Did you win? She said, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, yeah, she's the best poker player in the family. So if you didn't know that already, now you know. Now I know not to play her. Yeah. But you talked about how you wanted to take down a pro, like you take down your Phil Ivy, your Phil Helmuth, you know. Good place to start, you know. Yeah, be the number I'll start one. With the number, number one. one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get her a bracelet. <laughs> Man, um, Matisau went to prison. I didn't know that. Oh, Mike Matisau, the mouth, went to prison yeah. like a while ago. I, I, I think he was in there. He, he went in for a while then and came back and just kept doing his poker stuff. I think he, oh, yeah. he bought uh, or he tried to sell or buy drugs off a DEA agent. Oh, bad. Or, or, or someone that had been turned at least. Oh, okay. You know, yeah, so like right. Bloke so and- Matisau went to prison. I don't know much details on that. I'm not really as much into the poker game nowadays. I watch YouTube videos and stuff, but it's it's mostly old stuff that I've I seen love, a billion I love hearing times. hearing about before. people's lives outside of like if you just know them as well, a poker your man, player. Cain Velasquez. Yeah, what's he up to? What what's do you he, mean? What's he He's doing? He's in jail. Is he? <laughs> yeah. Shot a guy. Oh, no, Cain. You had it all ahead of you. So a bit of backstory, when uh, Nate first started getting into UFC, he, p- he picked a favourite fighter. He picked Cain Velasquez and ever since he picked Cain Velasquez, I don't think he had a, I don't think he had a win after that, man. Like, I, I, no, I, I never saw him fight. You never saw him? Well, I think him. eventually he did one. He had this, he just was always injured. And yeah. I think he did one, like I think he, he did have a fight before. Yeah, but I was just, by then, I was gone. Like, I didn't. Yeah. Um, yeah. Look, I don't yeah, know how the so world works. On I'm, I'm cursed because I pick a fighter, and then that that's his career ended. Yeah. Yeah. You come to you come to the party a bit late on Cain Velasquez, like how I got excited about Shane Carwin, and then uh, then he stopped fighting. But um, now Cain uh, sort of shot at somebody and ended up injuring the guy who he was trying to shoot's father. He's shot him. Family affair. What was he at a picnic or something? And it's even worse than that. Even worse than a picnic. It was a guy who was um, in the in all the articles, and I'm you know, um, who was allegedly being like, um, Kane. It was someone in Kane's family, mm. and this guy was suspected of like sexual misconduct with the. With his kids, essentially, or with Kane's kids, yeah, or with someone who Kane, or with Kane's family, you know, in general, yeah. First of all, bad idea. Um, you you don't mess with Kane, Kane the man kids. weapon. <laughs> yeah. He's um, already a weapon. Now he's got a gun. That's what happened. He doesn't need weapons. He's got a couple exactly. of bazookas. Like exactly, exactly. Just- that's that's kind of the horrible thing of it. Yeah. He could have gone in there and beat the fuck out of him. Oh, and the headlines could have been Kane beats the fuck out of this guy, and everyone would have been like, "Yeah, okay, cheering. yeah, yeah, fine." But he, yeah, attempted murder is different. Yeah, he just needs to walk around unarmed. Like, there's no, there's no reason for him to be arming himself. Yeah, we talked about that on the weekend as well. About like, um, if you were, you know, how you know, in choke and stuff, they, had, you know, they would talk about their street fighting days. Um. You know, they, they, they'll say stuff like, I've been in 40, 50 street fights in my life and all that sort of stuff. And it's like, that's crazy. Because every time you go into that, you're assuming that you're the better fighter in the, in the situation. Whatever situation it is, you're like, I'm the more, I'm the best fighter out of us two. You know what I mean? Mm. They, they, they would have to go in with that sort of confidence to to not just yeah, freeze. Yeah, you'll be 99.9% of the people on the planet. I just I just pretend that every single person is um you know a killer. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's, that's the safe way of doing it. That's the safe way. Yeah, of doing it. For sure. yeah, he he is a weapon. Uh, I'm just trying to find there was this so this documentary the other day and it was about um, apparently Germany just got in um, just got obsessed in World War II got obsessed with building larger and larger um, tanks. And yeah, they reason, were. One reason they lost the war is that they just kept trying to improve. But every mm. time you improve to a new version, um, mm. there's there's cost and 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 time because the engineering that goes into it, uh, yep. it's such a big 
you have to divert so many resources to then changing yeah. the, the structure. That yeah, because you go like, you know, if you're the Americans or whoever, if you're the British or whatever, you'd be like, cool, we've got our, we've got the M1, we've got, this, we've got our tank, we like this one. Can we have 100,000 barrels, please? And they can have 100,000 barrels made. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Whereas but, you'd be like, hey, can I get the slightly different version of the barrel on the, for, for the big boy? The, no, not the big boy, the big, big boy, the new big boy. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, man, this is actually so sick. I was trying to – I'd written it down, just I'd scribbled some notes mm. um, on my piece of paper and I knew that I, knew that I must have spelt it wrong because it, yeah. said, it said Land Cruiser with a K-R-E-N-Z-E-R. And I was like, that can't be right. And then it is. Well, it's, it's pronounced, it says English, Land Cruiser. So it's L-A-N-D-K-R-E-U-Z-E-R, P-1000, rat, mm. ratty. Mm. Okay, it was a design. It never got built. It was a, I'm oh, just I it's a thousand ton tank that, that was, um, it was on, on train bl- tracks? blueprints. No, no, it, 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 go, it, it moved, must have been. Not on train tracks. This is a fully mobile. It never. It was just in the design phase. It never got. It never got off the blueprints. Right. But its weapons. I actually haven't read the Wikipedia. This is just what I got from the the thing I was I was watching. It's. It just really struck me because because they said that a big tank back then they had this massive tank. I think it was about three hundred tons, and they said this one is a thousand. It's got naval artillery on it. Oh, it's, the the pictures of it, man. The cannon is. Fucking giant enormous massive. okay yeah, it's, it's true a crew of 40 run this thing yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they that this their plan this thing was just gonna you know and and the 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 armor on this would have been so thick that it's basically impenetrable so it's pretty much like a um a warship fortress yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 um i'm not gonna read anything on the wikipedia but um check that out but what's funny right is russia they they do the volume method they built 35,000 mm. T-34s. That's a type of yeah. tank. And they, they took all the shortcuts because they're like, man, these things are just going to get blown up anyway. So they didn't even have like pins. They, they did really crude, um, cheap ways of just like, let's just get this thing into battle. And yeah. like, you know, yeah, we might lose, you know, a percentage of them, like 5% of them may just yeah. – um, fall apart on the way. But we've got 35,000 of them. Wow. And so they just rolled in with pure numbers and overwhelmed. Yeah, that's the old you know, Blitzkrieg, eh? Hey. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the Blitzkrieg, I think, was the German. The German. Um, it was, wasn't it? I mean, but but their, their response was, yeah, just in secret, we're just going to outproduce them. <laughs> that's Anyway, that's neither here wow. nor there. I just – just, uh, it just struck me as being like, what this thing, the naval artillery on this thing is just like, like ludicrous. I would have loved to have seen that thing. Can we make that now? Like, let's, let's, let's put Australia on the map. Let's build one land cruiser because it's like, it sounds like a thing. You know, we have land cruisers. Every fucking, everyone has one. Why, why does the word railgun keep coming up? Well, that's, that's like the, that's the modern um, source of propulsion. Or, or, or firing like weaponry, it, mainly the US uses. This, this is this is a well. They're talking this about railgun, but but new like the US sink heaps of money into developing. Um, yeah, rail, yeah, rail they're rail. amazing. They're yeah. amazing. They 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 shoot like a twice square as projectile far, twice yeah. as far um, and and twice as fast. I think they can mm. get to like um, max six. Um, whereas it's quite amazing. So it would just rip through so stuff. Instead of using um, an explosion yeah. and, and that being the source of propulsion, mm. it is using electromagnetism and just like yeah. whipping a current through it and some, you know, bloody a physics. Lot cheaper. Physical, <laughs> physics laws apply and some brains. But it takes heaps of energy. So the big problem with that is if you're going to yeah. have an, if you're going to have a, a tank rolling around with a, what do you call those cannons again? Well, we a rail gun. Rail gun. If you have a tank rolling down the rail gun, it needs to have pretty much like a nuclear reactor plant on, on it. Yeah, on it. yeah. So you can have them in. You could have them in ships. You could have yeah, like, warships. Yeah. yeah, warships and things. But um, but in terms of like, yeah, you said it's expensive, but I think it's still cheaper than firing a missile. Yeah, yeah. Building a missile, firing a missile. I think so. Yeah. Um. Like, did rail guns? Did poker? Oh, tanks. and if, if speaking of military stuff, um, you should see. They say it's one. Of, we love big explosions, right? On the vacuous perspective, 
the, yeah, the bigger the better in terms of like you know universal ones, like universe ones, but on planet Earth, not so much. Yeah, yeah, but let's go, let's go terrestrial on this. Oh, of course, I think it's called the SS John Burke. Okay, was hit by a kamikaze, a kamikaze uh, fighter. Look mm. at the explosion on that bad boy. I don't know where this rates. Apparently, so the the um, the explosion basically the, the the kamikaze pilot hit perfectly where all the the munitions are, and that's the problem with cruising around at sea with like what was he at? Uh, Sorry. John Burke, the SS John Burke. John Burke. Yeah. Got hit by a kamikaze attack, and you should watch a video of that thing going up. Wait, there's a video of this. A video, and the all the other boats. Oh, the ammunition's gonna blow up. All the other boats are dwarfed by the like. Right. Yeah, yeah. that's the problem with transporting <laughs> ammunition. Wow. Yeah, but anyway, check that check that shit out. Man, I love yeah. I love World War Two. Like, I just love I wasn't involved with it, right? Yeah. If you look back, Norm Macdonald says, it's, um, he says, the more I hear about this Hitler guy, the less I like him. So I couldn't hear then. If I could see your mouth moving, um, he, he says uh, Hitler. The more I read about him, the less I like him. I don't get it. I don't get it. Well, like, he's one of the most <laughs> yeah, worst yeah, people know, in yeah. history. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'm like waiting for the punchline. No, that is, no, no there is no punchline. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, that that's like that's like the reality of it, right? Yeah, no, because you could say like, oh, he was a he was a he he, he was a soldier in World War One, and so it says here he was a politician as well. And then you'd read everything else, obviously. Yeah. Oh, and then you'd go. There, there is some there's some shit going on. He's done some things. Oh, of course. Did you ever like any of the Hitler's still alive stuff? I used to love that stuff. Oh man, I loved and take it with a grain it's of so salt. So good. Yeah, what's, it's, that, it's, what's that doco? I, I think I've mentioned you before. Finding Hitler. Finding Hitler on mm. SBS. Holy yeah, I'll have to check it out. Uh. They just start to, <clears throat> I feel like they're really kind of commercializing it on the back end where they're kind of like, exp- there is some interesting, there is some great stuff, which is just fascinating, reg- just getting an insight into the, the whole the whole thing and where mm. people moved after the war and stuff. It You don't need to care about finding Hitler for the story. There's other people, there's other high yeah. level people that yeah. do in fact get caught yeah. elsewhere. So let's focus on the let's focus on the reality. And yeah, the the conspiracy, I'm just going to use that word, it's a very tainted word. That that sign of thing about where it's it's what they what they do ascertain, it's undeniable that it's plausible. <laughs> that, that that's that's a fact that it's plausible and that's all you need and then focus on the reality about with the other high level yeah, of officials course. that got out and um i love it yeah it's fascinating it's highly fascinating. recommend yeah all right man hey good stuff thanks for tuning in always a pleasure comment put a yeah, comment in if, you, if you're here now let me know with yeah. a comment We'll see you next time. See you guys.